Hey guys, this is the Hard Time Strongman Podcast, training up a very class of man. And today we have a special DAS episode for you titled Dating versus Courting. So basically how I guess we were brought up our our experiences in dating and courting what the differences are and I guess kind of how to find your way in that. But first, a dad joke. Since you're not ready, you're never ready. I'll go first. Mm -hmm. How did the penguin build his house? He glued it together. I, I can't, I can't. What's the difference uh, between a snowman and a snow woman? Snowballs. This is so bad. I I just can't. Uh, I just. Can't. Why is the rabbit? Why did the rabbit go to the barber? He needed a hair cut. I knew you were going there, and I just cannot condone this crap. How did the two cats end their fight? How? They hissed and made up. <laughs> why is you Peter know, Pan always good. flying? Wait, why what? is Peter Pan always flying? How, why is Peter Pan always flying? Because he never lands. Because he never lands. One more, what you got? Oh my god. How do you tell the difference between a bull and a cow? How? It's either one or the other. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right so dating don't why do cows have hooves and not feet why they lactose oh <laughs> i hate you that was bad that was bad oh my <laughs> you idiot how do you make a waterbed bouncier <laughs> You add spring water. Oh. <laughs> Get out of here. I win. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> Dating versus courting. So. <laughs> oh, by God. definition. Okay. So dating. Dating is the stage of relationship where two people spend time together to get to know each other and figure out if they're compatible. This is not just talking. This is not having a crush on somebody. This is you cross that invisible and permeable line and you are a thing. And courting is trying to win the love or affection of someone. Either you're wooing or pursuing. You're, you're going in this with the intention of marrying this person. You're seeking marriage. With this relationship. So. Is that pretty much what you. Knew growing up. Were you. Really like were you. I guess privy or. Uh, no. say, like, were you familiar with the. With the with the difference. Because so that didn't I, really. I didn't really think about that. Or that didn't really come into my vernacular. Until you know I was. I was. You know a man. <laughs> Yeah, I always that just thought it was really... kind of that like vague kind of transition. You know, I mean, no one like sat me down like, all right, son, this is dating and this is courting. You know, at least that wasn't in my I... household. I don't know. Yeah, that never happened in mine either. It was pretty much just a I feel like courting the, the idea, the formal form of courting went out of style in like. 
dude, I don't know, like the 40s, the 50s, around the time that the counterculture started happening. I don't know. I mean, there is it's definitely a breakaway at some point, but you know, I, I get mm-hmm. what you mean there. It's not on the forefront of the culture. Right. You know I mean? It's not the it's not the Middle Ages where you, you know, call on someone anymore, you know. Right. It's literally you just call them, you text them. Like it's 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 not the yeah. same anymore. Like romantic interest, romantics in general has changed so much, even in like the past twenty years. Oh my gosh, man. Like the advent I mean, people of are, people are so different. They I mean, you are. Got people who are dating for years. Mm-hmm. Years. And it for, never gets serious. And they never get serious. Like, serious. Or they just don't even think about it or like it just happens or you know whatever it's 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 crazy yeah it's it's just not the same it, the feeling isn't the same i mean with the advent of i mean jesus online dating apps online yeah stuff i, I mean think- even snapchat facebook messenger like communication has gone i'm not even going to say by the wayside but it has just evolved to a form of which we don't recognize it the same way that we did back when we were kids. Well, the defini- the definitions are different. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like the technology is you- different. Yeah. Well, and just communication is different. You know, like you said, you and I could be talking about the same exact thing and we wouldn't even know it, you know, or we could think we're talking about the same thing. You have completely different ideas in our head. You know, right. you ask, you know, five people off the street, what dating is. Or a good definition on dating, and you're gonna get five different answers. I think about that easily in a relationship. You know what someone's actual intentions are. I just feel like I think a lot of the issue is that we become so uncomfortable with tackling things. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? With like addressing conflict or like going into conflict in order to address things that we miss out on all this stuff. Yeah, you know, people are so afraid to fight, quote unquote you know or just in general you know, people are afraid of fight people are afraid of conflict so you have all these miscommunications that otherwise would have been hashed out did i ever tell you yeah, about my it, my first uh my first date with my wife i think so it's been a minute i've drank a lot since then yeah right yeah, me too buddy um <laughs> uh no i took her to the barnes and noble because i knew she'd love it um and I didn't know about this until later because I was so you know focused on her. But like as we walked through Barnes and Noble, whenever we got to a new session, she would ask me different questions, like based on the subject of the of the sections we were in. Interesting. So like poetry, travel, home, uh, politics, like all different things. And essentially, she was just trying to rule me out. <laughs> so we handled like. Think of any controversial issue or conversation or anything that could cause friction. We talked about it. And then we had coffee and a brownie at the Starbucks. So that was my first date with my wife. And so we did not really, you know, filter out any uncomfortable conversations. We just, you know, my, you know, me and my wife were like, we didn't have time for that crap. It's like, I wasn't looking for a relationship at the time. Neither was she. We just kind of fell into it. And it's like, all right, well, you know, if if I'm going to date you, then I'm not screwing around. I don't have time for that. So let's just see if this is going to work. Let's see if still this think could, it's, could actually go anywhere. I still think it's funny that you try to keep her hidden from both me and uh, Bob. Why do you think it's funny? Of course I did. <laughs> and then i I'm managed the hell away from you and then i managed to find out where you guys were and showed up at red robin and then bob showed up at red robin i still don't forgive you for that <laughs> she did not deserve that she, and then i watched you just basically have all. an aneurysm because you're like hey that was so ask great. me anything <laughs> so great because i worked so hard to compartmentalize 
me versus me in the army from my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't happening, bro. You're, you were you're in like, the army, so you were going to have to. you're like, hey. It actually works really well. She's still mad about that, but what are you going to do? Compartmentalize, I don't know what. compartmentalize man. That's what you got to do. Oh. No. Because you are not. Because I, I am not the same man I was when I was in the army. I was not the same man while I was in the army around my girlfriend slash fiance slash wife as when I was at home. Oh, yeah, you can't be. You can't be, you know, and that's the thing that a lot of people don't understand or have it twisted. You know, people worry so much about being genuine. And being transparent and, you know, like being consistent with everything. But like, you can't tell me that I can be the same freaking infantryman ready to freaking just ice a bunch of dudes with my freaking 240 and then go and you know come with my wife on the couch while she reads a book like it's a completely different mindset you need to be able to have that range right you, i i'm a firm believer in you know it's part right we started the podcast you need to be able to do both you need to be able to do all this stuff right but at least for me i couldn't hold it at the same time hand in hand no. i had to have a different mentality while I was at work versus while I was at home. A well-adjusted person is not going to be able to do that. And I know as much as you do, because when I came back from Afghanistan, I wasn't the same guy. Like I was, Oh yeah, I was, and you can go ahead and bleep that out. I don't care. <laughs> I was not the same. And even looking back on the relationship I was in at the time and seeing how I behaved afterwards, I was so distant and so withdrawn. Like it was, I, I, I should have known. I should have seen that that relationship was going to fail very quickly. And it did. It, yeah. it inevitably did. Um, and it took years and years and years of self deprecation near alcoholism and. I mean, it was self self destructive but... behavior before I finally figured out with the help of my now wife that I was in the throes of PTSD, depression, and anxiety. Yeah, man. I mean, we, man, we people, went through the same freaking crap. You know, PTSD, I know. anxiety, depression, suicidal ideation. Like, mm -hmm. and you have to wrestle with all that stuff. You have to. And you're, you're talking about having these two different forms of people. It's, it's the same principle of having the light switch. You know, mm -hmm. being able to flip the switch and being able to be this one person while turning it off. Well, just the people are not going to be able to do that. It's at some point that light switch is going to break mm. and it's going to be stuck off or on. There's no in between. There's no, you know, mellowed out middle road. It's going to be one or the other. If you're exposed to great violence, you cannot escape that. It's always going to be etched in your mind, no matter what. And well, that's the just, problem. Well, not just the, the exposure, right? Because on, you know, obviously on a normal level, like that is going to cause trauma, right? Mm -hmm. And like you said, it's going to be etched on you and you're going to have to work through that or it's going to work through you, right? But on a, you know, on, you know, another layer to that, like uh, first responders, law enforcement, military types, you know, contractors, like dudes that are not only exposed to violence, but are trained in violence and are expected to carry it out violence and have that mentality and have that um expectation like that's a whole other gig that's yeah. a whole other gig you know along with you know okay i'm gonna do all this and then i'm gonna go home to my family and my two kids and my dog and you know, we're going out to the lake this weekend and i hate that you know and we wonder why guys get divorced when they're freaking 23 and they're on their second marriage and they have alcoholism and everything else i mean the fact is we're not, you know, handling how to, you know, how to handle that. Handling how to handle that's such a stupid, <laughs> that's such a stupid way to uh, explain that. We're not, we're not teaching guys how to, how to adjust with that and well, different coping strategies and how to work through things. Because I'll give you a little pushback. I don't think it's a well adjustment issue. I think people are able to do it. But it's a different mentality. You know, I use the term compartmentalization a lot. You know, but, you know, yeah, you can you turn it on off. But, you know, for me, I, you know, I put my 
family life in a box. I put the army in a box. I put all my stupid esoteric knowledge in a box. And you, know, you dip into one whenever you need to. But you have to have that line there in my in my opinion. Big problem I see with that is that that is how you develop a I almost want to call it a dissociative disorder. Like regardless, that's how you develop a mental health disorder. Oh, for sure. Like yeah. To just not saying it's a great idea. This. No. <laughs> it's not, it's not, not a great know, idea. But, I'm just saying. Like big, that's how I had to problem, that's how I had to do it. Right. And the big problem here, and not to get this into a um, mental health episode, but big problem here, especially in the military, is that at least when we were in, I don't know how it is now. I've heard it's gotten better. But when we were in, you could not go to mental health to see a therapist, to work through these issues, to deal with the problems that you're facing. You get grounded, yeah. You get kicked out. You don't even get grounded. Like you were, it's not even that you are not employable anymore. You are out, period. Well, that's the whole point. You know, if you, when, when we were getting out, it was, hey, you're either deployable or you're not. If you're not, bye. Mm hmm. You know, they were finally starting to get back to having a working army again. So, yeah, if you're not deployable, pff, see ya. I mean, because, so, you know, can, can you go to, God, to mental health and say, hey, sometimes I think about killing myself and other people? Nope. Can't say that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Because, God forbid, infantrymen, mortarmen, artillerymen, who are exposed to yeah. yeah dead bodies freaking body parts all the crap that we dealt with over in afghanistan god forbid that any of us who see that stuff who go through that stuff who are trained to kill people mm -hmm. who didn't have to live with that stuff god forbid we get access to medical care to be able to deal with that to keep us deployable so that we can keep going and doing this stuff god forbid we have access to that kind of thing yeah Anyway, hi, patrons. We love you guys. Yeah. So my first date with my wife, thinking back on this, was honestly a blur. I remember going out for drinks with her and we just sat and I mean, she talked. She talked a lot and I just like to listen. You know, I like to mm -hmm. get to know somebody by listening to their stories and all this stuff. And we conversed a little bit, but she did the majority of the talking. And it, to me, it was just a blur. I was so enamored with this girl. Like, mm. let me put it to you this way. When we first started talking, because we met online on one of the dating apps, and our first conversation was about furries. Nice. That's how it started and how friggin' ridiculous they were. And it just evolved from there. And it was just that kind of banter back and forth the entire time. And I just, I had a feeling from the very start, I was like, this may work out because I was at the end of like where I thought I was going to be dating wise. Like I just given up. I'd been on all the dating apps and they all sucked. It, everything was a dead end. It, it, I still remember just, crazy eyes. I think she was my people favorite. Do what? Crazy eyes. I think she was my favorite. <sighs> Let's not get into that. I, I don't even remember how I met her through one of the like 20 dang apps you had yeah probably that was a weird weird time not judging um, thank god um we can, we can both agree that furries aren't actually people so i think we're we're on pretty even ground oh 100 percent. yeah so <laughs> anyway the night ended you know she had ubered to this place i had driven all the way out there because it was way over in tampa and I was like, all right, I'll just drive you home. So I dropped her off at her apartment, walked her to the door, and that was it. Second night, got in my car, started driving home. I made it. I made it probably about five minutes away, and she texted me. She's like, hey, um, I don't have to work tomorrow. I'm going on a trip. Uh, you want to come back and just watch junk TV and eat, order pizza? All right, cool. Turned around, went back, watched junk Bravo TV and ordered a big old pizza, uh, pizza from Duomichi Pizza. Delicious. And I did not leave there until I think it was almost three in the morning. And I had to be up at six to go to work. Worth it. I was floating on cloud nine that next day. 
mm-hmm. did not care. I, at that point, like, I didn't know, no, but I knew, yeah. you know, I knew like this was the one. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until later. I think it was, it was probably date like three date three. I was like, yeah, I know. I know for sure now, but it was at that point after that first date, it went from dating to courtship. And I knew mm-hmm. it's like, okay. And that's the difference guys. That's, that's the difference. Dating is just like an informal thing. It's well, how it's right. It doesn't, be. it doesn't mean you, it doesn't mean you love this person. You gotta, you, it doesn't mean no. marriage. It doesn't, I mean, hell man. In this day and age, it doesn't, doesn't really even have to mean anything. It, you yeah. Know, you have people doesn't. in the same relationship and one can say, oh yeah, we've been dating for six months and one person. Oh yeah. We hang out sometimes, you know, it's so, it's so liquid. Whereas mm-hmm. courting it, you know, it sure as hell does mean, you know, you love this person and you're figuring out if you guys are compatible long-term, you know, if you could, you know, get and stay married to this person. Right. So you mentioned it a little bit, but you want to go into where we get that word courtship, what that kind of means, where that comes from. Right. So there's, there's a long history to both dating and courtship, courtship more so because these, uh, this dates back to like, oh my God, really, really far. And there's different forms of this. I mean, there's, there's arranged marriages, there's courtship. Like when I think courtship, I really think back to like the Victorian era, you know? Mm. So when we're talking about that, it's, it's just, it's a formal an elaborate thing. You know, there's, there's rituals, exchanging letters, social gatherings, you know, there's strict rules of etiquette that are, are just, are, they're being followed throughout this entire process. I mean, that extended into the colonial times you know if you watch uh the patriot him calling on and you know like that that whole process that's that's still courting there's there's an entire like respect involved in this but if you get to courting today you know it's definitely it's definitely less common than the traditional uh the traditional mindset it's a lot less formal but you still have a lot of the traditions there, right? So especially, I mean, like you the, do the merit, you know, the engagement process. So, you know, like asking for the father's blessing mm-hmm. and, you know, being uh, monogamous and, mm-hmm. you know, all this kind of stuff with, you know, uh, you know, you see this mostly with more a uh, religious background, not just, you know, Judeo Christian, but, um, you know, where you have that, that outline there, you know, abstaining from, you know, sex and, you know, the monogamy and, you know, everything. It's a more, you know, like you said, it's more getting more serious and you're essentially playing into those roles, feeling out those roles without fully, uh, you know, without fully what am I trying to say? You're man. It's hard to explain. Yeah. So you're doing the formal are... roles. You're doing the formal thing without actually doing the essentially getting dressed up in the formal outfits. That's what you're, you're getting at. Like the, the rituals are still there, but not the entirety of the rituals. You know, you're not still going to like big, gatherings at the castle and like everybody's there yeah. and you're trying like, to so, like yeah so like yeah. dating you know you're you're going out and you're doing things with this person you know, mm-hmm. hey you look pretty do you want to get some drinks yeah sure you know you talk about your family life talk about what you like to do you you know you're getting to know this person when you get to the point of courting which i guess i should say that differently because it's not like a natural progression you know it's a choice right mm-hmm. and it's a it's a, a framework a template but um you once know, you get to courting you're essentially like figuring out how and when you're going to get married kind of thing is essentially well, what you're doing ish because like dang you can yeah. date for forever and not be serious about someone at all 
mm-hmm. you know whereas if you're but, courting it's a it's a conscious choice like hey i need to see if i can actually live with this person and be right. married to this person you mm-hmm. know do they have my same values do they have my same goals and dreams for their future are we compatible in that way are we compatible physically are we you know whereas some of these things happen you know in day like you have people who've been together 20 years you know live in the same house have the same you know bank account and you know they're not married it's just you know whatever whereas you know courting it's the same but different you know it's the it's the intention of being married but you're you're not playing out everything it's like the i guess it's like the last kind of step before committing into that yeah 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 Yeah. so i i and i know there's overlap there's a lot of overlap between the two there's there's similarities there's differences in this but in my mind i view dating as almost a short-term thing dating short-term and to me courting or you know relationship is long term yeah i could see that i could see that for sure so even with short term you're just there to have fun you know it's it's there to see if you can find someone of like mind that you can get along with enjoy spending time together you know maybe it's serious maybe it doesn't it's casual yes you're exploring it's you know like you're going out you're doing things you're mm -hmm. like what's this person about what's this person like you know, on a good day, on a bad day, when they're stressed, like what you know, you're wanting to be around that person. Whereas right, exactly. the long term hits, mm-hmm. okay, this is what this person's like, but what am I like with this person? What are we like together? And will that work? Do our is personalities we mesh do? well? Yes. Yeah. Can we do this long term? Exactly. That's That's in my mind how it looks. And You can't, there is a lot of potential where you can transfer, like you were talking about, from dating to courting. Like it's not, it's not a linear process. Right. But you can pick up and change. Granted, you have to both both be on the same mindset. Otherwise, you're going to go back to dating or ending it all together. But once you get in that same mindset that you're transferring to a courting or I guess a relationship in this, Mm -hmm. in this mindset. Well, it's being casual versus being serious, I guess, another way of saying it. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Because once you get there, it's 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 another gear, man. It's the same oh, yeah. thing. It's like there's so many different gears from dating to freaking relationships to <clears throat> being engaged to being married. Like the gears change and it's well it's different relationship by relationship. Ride. Like I said, you know, mm-hmm. there are some things that you know, I mean, hell man, me and my wife are literally I'm not I'm not joining our first date. Like we're just like, all right. What do you think about, you know, abortion? What do you think about, you know, marriage, divorce? What do you think about, you know, this or that? Like anything that could draw a wedge, we talked about. Yes. Because like, you know, let's cut the crap. I don't care about your favorite color. Like, (laughs) you know, I will and I'll remember it. But we'll talk about that later. You know, let's see if it's even worth it to to try this out. You know, if it's worth our time. Right. So, and I mean, that's exactly right. And I mean, I remember, I remember the day, I remember the day where I said to myself, like, oh, oh yeah, I'm going to marry this girl. 100%. Right. Yo, know, and, you know, there were, there were little moments here and there, which, you know, like you said, it's like, oh, oh, okay, this might, this might be something, you know, all that, like, that was really special. This is like, this isn't a normal thing and granted me and my life mm-hmm. went into freaking high gear super quick that not normal <laughs> going in for the first kiss a little early there was a natural pause as he was talking which i thought was him leaning into it so i was going to be like a little cute early all right and then kissing down the aisle that was the that was the photographer and you know it hey guys seven from the hard time strongman podcast here to bring a quick word for our newest sponsor blackbeard fire starters we first saw Blackbeard Firestarter a few years ago, and after seeing what the product can do, it's been our kit ever since. Their Firestarter rope and their fire plugs are windproof, waterproof, dummy proof. They have an insane burn time, and like anything else that they offer, it just works. Besides their fire stars, they offer an arc lighter, ferro rod, stormproof matches, basically anything that you need to get a fire started. 
To better equip you, we cherry picked their inventory and made our Hard Time Strongman Fire Kit. Basically, our essentials kit for anything that you can need to get a fire started. But besides that, they're offering 10% off anything in their store when you use the code STRONGMEN. We love the guys at Blackbeard Firestarter. We love what they're doing. We trust them and we trust their products. And we honestly can't recommend them enough. Make sure to check them out online at blackbeardfire.com or on Instagram at blackbeardfire. Huge shout out to the guys at Blackbeard Fire for working with us and for bringing the fire. As always, guys, stay in the fight. Hey, everybody, this is 6 and 7 with the Hard Time Struggle Men Podcast. We are coming to talk to you about our Patreon and Discord. Hey, guys, our patrons get early access to all of our episodes. They get all of our exclusive pre and post shows, all of our spicy takes, all of our rabbit holes that we go on, everything that we want to include in the episode, but we can't because we need to stay on topic. And soon enough, we will be offering digital downloads, guides, everything that we've been working on in the background will soon be available to our patrons. So make sure to check it out. And come hang out with us on Discord. Speaking of the spicy stuff, this is where we discuss most of it. Once you're there, you'll get access to all of our in-depth discussions, including stuff like homesteading, fieldcraft, medical, camping, communications, shooting. You like ARs? Come talk to us about it. You like 4x4 vehicles and prepping? Come talk to us about it. You like Tannerite, Thermite, Napalm? Come talk to us about it. All of the campfire talks that would get us kicked off of other platforms, it's right there in our Discord. Come join our community. We're active on Discord every day. We're interacting with members constantly. We have guys from every walks of life coming to contribute their expertise to all of these various fields and subjects that we've been talking about. Come join the watch Discord. Come join the Discord. Join our community. Build up that better class of man. Now back to the episode. I know that, but I'm talking about that first kiss. You jump the gun pretty handily. You can ask anybody who was there. You can ask anybody because your perception of reality is completely different from what actually friggin' happened. Yeah, so was yours during your wedding. Shut up. That's just weddings. I didn't eat for yeah, the but I'm entire a time. You. Oh, dude, that was a mistake. <laughs> that was a serious. I, I, dude, I started eating the second we got down the aisle and out. Like you're as soon lucky. as we were in the back, yeah, I was welcome. eating. You're welcome. Oh, I know. We, I was very intentional with that. <laughs> no, we arranged that ahead of time. Well, no, I remember Way saying, time. hey, dickhead, drink water. During the ceremony or the uh, the reception, yes, thank you for that. But I'm talking the period between before actually we started taking pictures. Yeah, no, good for you guys. Yeah, no, I am yeah. a firm, firm believer that if you, you know, if and when somebody gets married, like figure that out in your wedding plan. Like, oh my God, yes. have a time where it's just you and wifey, have some freaking 20 food, minutes. drink some freaking water, mm-hmm. make out a little bit, and then go out and take your pictures and everything else. But you need that yeah. time to, because you're not going to eat the whole time unless if you plan it, because it is. We did. <sighs> it's a lot. It's just a lot to do. Mm-hmm. Marriage is so freaking hard. Like it is. it is the hardest three hours of your freaking life. Like it's just. Well, that's, the, that's a really the ceremony, statement. not like but, actual marriage, but you know. Yeah, no, but it is just like, oh, there's so much, so much pop and circumstance. People I never met before. Why did I invite them? I don't know. So that Either was the thing, are. too. And and not to get on these tangents, because I mean, I guess this is technically still courting, but when we we intentionally only invited people that we had spoken to in the last year. Smart. We only invited people who were actually going to be there that would and I hate to put it this way. It sounds really crass in my mind saying it this way. We only invited people that we wanted to be there with that we knew would be supportive of us more frequently in our journey of marriage. But that it sounds crass, but you want people who are going to be active in your lives. Exactly. It, that's exactly right. We want people who are active in our lives. And yes, and we have family be, members. We still love them, down, but it shouldn't be looked down on. You should be able to send a card and that should be nice. But right. like, holy crap, man, you don't need to drag poor Mima out from, you know, Southern California who you haven't seen in 20, 30 years. You know, that's not no. fair. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I mean, I'm, we, gl- I'm glad she's excited and everything, but dude, <laughs> you know, yeah. like send a card. I don't know. Holy crap. We could do an entire episode on just like wedding 
like wedding planning and all that oh, jazz. Lord. We could like, we could streamline so many people's freaking planning so easily. But yeah, well, we're not going to do that no, today because like, today we're going to talk no. about key differences between <laughs> working and dating. Okay. We've already done that. In fact, we've already hit similarities and overlaps. We're, we're at the pros and cons. You realize that, right? We've already hit all the other it. stuff. Yes. Wow. All right. Pros and cons. So dating. Oh, my God. So pros and cons of dating. So pro, I mean, a lot of these things could be seen as both pro or con. I was about to you say that. Was, the one I'm thinking of is just like it depends on your mindset where you're at mm-hmm. in life. And I mean, honestly, just your mindset. So the um, the casualness for me. Yes, that's what I was is thinking. Definitely yeah. a pro and definitely a con. So pro, if you can use it. Because me, I hated myself. When I, was, I hate dating. I hate dating so oh, I, much. I, because yeah, I hate the game. I did not know where I was at. I know what I was like. Mm-hmm. I had no intention of playing the game. So I wasn't good at it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. so but for guys who are just there to have fun and meet new people and you know try a little bit of everything then yep dating's for you man like that casualness is great if you can use it if you can be comfortable with you know yes or no or maybe or not really caring where you're at or what's going on you know send it you know and then if you see someone or meet someone that you you know are actually make a good connection with and you can you just like explore, you know, how you interact with that person and that kind of personality and that kind of relationship, then that can be, you know, dang can be a really, really great thing for you. So, Whereas a con can also be, you know, if you're dang someone who is not serious, it has no intention of being serious. If you're not able to communicate that, that can be a huge blow to your pride. That can be a huge, you know, hit to you just relationally, you know, emotionally, you know? Dating and you know, as as casual as dating can be, it can you know, it has obviously you know a huge impact on you. So with casual, I'm gonna throw this out there to all of our listeners, both male and female. Don't go somebody. Be a grown up. If you don't think it's working out, just tell them, just say it. If they don't accept it, that's on them. Just say it and be done. You can still block them. Don't ghost them. I've been ghosted so many times in my life, and I'm just like, this sucks. There is no worse feeling than being into somebody and being ghosted by them. Well, you know what, too? Have your yeses be yeses and your noes be noes. 100%. And accept that, too. If you're on the receiving end of those, a yes is a yes and a no is a no. It's not like the... Family guy for that skit. Honestly. Yeah. It's not the family guy skit of freaking like, what was it? Roger Moore. Or it was just like, yeah, 15 no's and a yes is still a yes. It's like, no dude, it's freaking yeah. no. Well, and be grateful that someone, you know, is communicating that to you and not leading you around or being around the bush or, you know, accept it. You know, like you said, and take it on the cheek and be done with it. You know, life is too short to play the game. It honestly is. And yes, it is a game. Like there's the whole like, you know, what can you do for me? The mindset of dating with the game is, dude, it is so detrimental. But some people don't want to get married. That's just not. And they don't. Some people's interest. And that's fine. And be upfront with that. You know, exactly. That's what I was going to say. And, you know, it doesn't matter if you like are dating with the intention of marriage, if you're dating just to have fun, if you're dating just to get a body count you know, which I'll endorse, whatever. But <laughs> you the do biggest you, thing, regardless of what your intention is, you need to communicate that intention with whoever you're, you know, having that relationship with, with big or small. You know, communication is the biggest thing. And yes, that is the biggest thing. That's the biggest thing that goes wrong with everyone's dating life and the relationship and their marriage. Communication kills everything. And once you figure out how to actually communicate, and hey, we're going to do an episode on this later, once you figure out how to communicate, life gets so much better. Don't just sit there and expect someone to read your mind or don't sit there and try to read someone's mind. Ask questions. State your intentions. Stop playing the game. I'm going to break the system. Stop playing the freaking game. Be upfront. Be upfront with everything. Be open. Yes, sometimes you say something and it's probably going to hurt some feelings, but figure out a way to 
create a soft, a, a soft start with it so that the blow isn't as hard as you think it's going to be. I guarantee you, if you phrase it a certain way, people will take it very, very well, and you will get so much further in communications. Also, I was going to say, you know, like we talked about in you know earlier episodes, you know, everything is a learning opportunity. Mm -hmm. You can always work on your self development, and I think that's one of the most painful but important parts of dating and courtship and everything else is not just learning about other people and how we interact with them or how you interact with this person, but learning about yourself. You know, and if you're having issues with communication, you're having issues where it's just like, you know, what you perceive as failure after failure after failure, you know, maybe it's time to take a step back mm -hmm. and, you know, you don't have to be ready for it right now. It may be a thing where you're just like, all right, right now, I'm just not compatible with somebody because I don't even know where I sit on these issues or I don't even like, I'm not happy with the person I am right now. And, you know, you have to take that and, you know, fix it. Right. You know, it's not worth, you know, harming, you know, one, three, five, six people, you know, while you're trying to figure out that, oh, wait a minute, I'm the problem here. <laughs> you know, you need to, yeah. you know, have that introspection to, you know, figure out, all right, do I need to figure out my values? Do I have to figure out my goals? Do I have to, you know, whatever, fill in the blank. And it took me a long time to figure that out too. Like, you know, I, I definitely had some false starts for sure. And a lot of it was not all my fault, but a lot of it was definitely my fault. But yeah. I got lucky and I figured that out with my wife. Mm. Yeah. Once I figured out that I was having a lot of problems, I'm not saying either one of us was perfect or bad, but once I figured out that, you know, I was having problems and I actually talked to someone about it, figured my stuff out. Holy crap. Even when we went to couples counseling, just as like, you know, we need to learn how to communicate kind of thing. Life gets better, guys. It does. Once you figure yeah. your stuff out, once you figure out that, you know, oh, they're not just all crazy. There might actually be something wrong with me. Something I haven't figured out yet. Once you figure it out, life gets better. 100%. And we will do an episode on, you know, fighting fair, fighting with your wife. But that, oh, um, man. Once again, is a very, very important episode, but not this episode. Right. So, yeah, just introspection, communication. You know, that's the name of the game here. But moving on, personal choices and compatibility. So, like we talked about, self-reflection, giving, you know, your partner, the other person time to, to self-reflect. And because you're not just, you're figuring out if you like this person. You're figuring out if you like this person, if they like you, if you both like yourselves together because that can be a whole other issue depending on, you know, what y'all do to each other's personality. But, you know, seeing if your values match your principles, right. you know, figuring out what you, what you both have, you know, what your goals are. Right. So Dude, figure out if you have any deal breakers or if those oh, deal breakers are oh, actually yeah, deal breakers. Yeah. I mean, and not just that, but I mean, not even the foundational stuff. But then down the line, okay, like we're doing great. We're going, you know, we're dating, you know, going steady as they used to call it. But it's Jesus. like, all right, now what does this look like now though? Are we going to stay here? Like, cause I'm pretty happy with where we're at now, but what's the natural progression of this? Like, are we going to get married? Mm -hmm. Do we want kids? Do we want to travel? Are we worried about, are, you know, are we going to move for jobs? Are we going to, you know, hunker down and, you know, plant roots where we're at? You know, like you, you were talking about your lives here and how to you know figure out how you both manage you know stress how you manage conflict that is a yes you know like we talked about just saying we were going to go on on how to fight fair but you know the whole trying to avoid conflict thing isn't going to work when you marry somebody because they don't leave <laughs> Unless yeah. something really, really bad happens, which you shouldn't want to happen. If you want to be in a healthy and lasting relationship, you guys are going to fight. 
So you're going to have to learn how to fight. You need to figure out. Yeah, you need to figure out how to fight. It's like sparring. Honestly. That's actually a great way of putting it that because you want to figure out how to. I say, I hate to say that you got to you got to figure out a way to win, but you're just. In this instance, you're trained, you're figuring out how to actually verbalize how you're feeling. You're trying to figure out how to verbalize your slights that your perceived slights in a way that is not going to hurt your partner. You're working the kinks out. Yep. Yeah. And not those kind of kinks. That's a different episode. No, but you know, you are fighting. You know, mm-hmm. because you both have your non-negotiables, you both have, you know, a whole bunch of baggage in the back that, you know, you're having to work through from past relationships, from your childhood, from growing up, from past trauma, whatever. And you're going to have to work that out. And a lot of the time that's going to be in a way that you can't verbalize because you haven't verbalized it to yourself yet. So you're working out how to do that with another person who has all their own stuff to deal with. So, I fully you know, freaking the, endorse I think, couples counseling. Yeah, well, for me, the why I say why I say sparring is because it's a fight, mm-hmm. but you're both on the same team. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You are both on the same team. You are fighting. Don't get me wrong, but you're both on the same team. So Thank if you, you need to fight, make it you know fight fair. You're not trying to win. You're trying to resolve. Yes, that's important. That is a very very important thing. You are not trying to yeah. win. You are you're not, not trying, trying to get to one up on beat. your wife or yes. on your husband or whatever on your spouse. You know, you guys are trying to make life more doable together. <laughs> yes. And if you can't figure out why it's such a, you know, such an issue that, you know, your husband wants you to load the dishwasher, you guys need to figure that out because uh, that was a horrible example. No, I mean. Uh, no, I think it's I fair. I think it's fair. Say? It's just, well, yeah, just like, you know, daily tasks, right? If you guys can't figure out why, like where that comes from, right? You know, take away, you know, if you think that's misogynistic or not, but maybe your husband grew up with that was his mom's chore. And dad handled the kids put down the dogs, the chickens, the rabbits, (laughs) the laundry, everything else. But he just couldn't stand doing the dishes like he hated the feeling on his hands and the clanking. It it was too loud for him because. You know, your poor old man was a freaking artillery man and that brings back to a place he doesn't want to go to. Anyway, that wasn't a chore that he did when you were growing up, but you don't know why. You're trying to figure but out how to make that these was, issues that you have. Right, but that was the example that you grew up with. So you mm-hmm. thought, you know, here's a real world example, okay? So me and my wife had a conflict when we were first married because we would constantly run out of... um Paper. Of, of no of groceries okay but it was like the high frequency stuff that we used all the time so like bread milk fruit that sort of thing and I, it was never like a, a fight but it was just like a kind of a submersive conflict because i just intrinsically expected my wife to order those things or have them delivered or pick them up or just you know, keep it in the house. Why did I think that? Did we ever talk about that? No. But my mom growing up handled all of the household stuff because my dad was working, right? So my mom having three kids and a husband just made sure that things were in the house all the time. And so it wasn't like uh, every week we have to go over the, you know, the grocery list of, oh, what do we need? Oh, we need to get this. No, it was just art. We have high frequency stuff and we're just going to keep it in the house. And that's just how I grew up and how, you know, that worked. Granted, my mom had been a mom and a wife for a long time when I learned that habit and, you know, learned that expectation. Whereas me and my wife were just trying to figure out how to be freaking adults (laughs) along with, you know, being married to each other. Right. And so we had to work that out. My wife's like, okay, why are you, you know, constantly like you know, about, <laughs> you know, the groceries, go pick up groceries. And it's like, but I shouldn't have to do that. And I didn't know why. I didn't know why I thought that until we 
had that conflict and we figured it out. It's like, oh, okay, that's great that we have things that need to be constantly, you know, in the pantry or in the fridge. Could you please put it on the list? Man. Okay, yeah, I can do that. How does that song go? Well, I guess this is growing up. Yeah, man. But we, I would like that's the sort of thing you know. You talk about the was it five 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 or whatever. Mm-hmm. But it's like that's the sort of thing where it'll just eat you if you don't talk about it, dude. It is. It re- so really is. Goes. It all goes back to you know to that communication compatibility thing. You know, you guys need you know. With, for me, so dating I see as casual, as short term casual. You just having fun figuring out who you are, figuring out who other people are. Once you transition that either formally or informally into according into like, all right, can I marry this person? Can we do all this? It's you are, you know, figuring out, hey, where are these friction points going to be? How are we going to, how are we going to deal with this? You know, can I do life with someone long term? The answer is yes. Or at least should be yes, in my mind, at least. Yeah, because going through life alone sucks. But sometimes it's no. It is true. That's why you have to do it. You can't just jump into a relationship long term, and then you know be surprised about this stuff five, ten years later. Because then you're going to be at a point to where, man, you got a lot of baggage, and that's really hard to work through. Especially if it ends, dude. You're that's five years of wasted time, and that is one of my biggest pet peeves. Pet pet peeves. Is having my time time. wasted. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of wasted time over the years with the wrong people. And I'm not saying that they were bad people. I'm just saying it wasn't the right person, you know? Yeah. And at the same time, I hate that they wasted my time and I hate that I wasted their time. Well, I was going to say it's time that they took away from your wife. (laughs) Yeah. Dude, exactly. I I have told her this so many times is like, I wish that I could go back in time and figure out who I was supposed to end up with. And then find you so I can meet you sooner. And we could have more time together. Time, it wouldn't work. Because it wouldn't. The same person that you are exactly. now. Exactly. Exactly. So, I had to go through some really traumatic shit to get to where I, I am gonna say, That's what me and my wife talk about all the time. It's like, man, you know, like even if we went back and found each other, it wouldn't work because I would have never dated you. <laughs> like, and my wife said the same thing. Would not have, would not have worked at all. Like we constantly ask our, each other is like, you know when we were going back and looking through some of our experiences and talking about like some of our childhood experiences, we're like, do you think we would have been friends growing up? Mm. Overwhelmingly, I find the answer to be no. I'd like to think that we would have, like if I know if I would have known her. Yeah, sure. I think I would have been friends with her, but getting to that point of actually knowing someone just, I mean, you remember how things were in middle school and high school. It's like, Oh dude, the preconceived notions of people like, no, I wouldn't have been friends with her. She would. She definitely would not have been friends with me. Well, it's like not even worth your time. I mean, I remember. <laughs> so the big thing when me and my wife were dating it was like, you know, she had been hit on by you know, a bunch of soldiers before, obviously, because we were in that area. But yep. you know, she didn't. You know, I started gaining interest in her, and you know, started flirting and everything. Like she did her normal, you know, tactic of just being you know cold and put offish and just like I don't have time for you. And I thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> what normally worked to like scare guys off and you know like push away i just thought it was funny it was like oh look at you you're so fierce <laughs> and was, yeah similarly um i lingered too long after a date at the front door mm-hmm. and i was like i was kicking myself i'm just like i should go in for the kiss but i don't know if she wants me to like i couldn't figure out the sign and she said it well Drive safe, you felt the animal, and slammed the door in my face. Nice. And I, sh- the old me would have been like, wow, what a, bitch. and walked away and never talked to her again. But I, this me was just like, I like her. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's funny. Like yeah. she, she literally just quoted Home Alone to me. Right. While slamming the door in my face because That's I, how you know it's real. Her. I was like, yep. Quote Home Alone so I know it's real. You know what's my, so I know mm-hmm. it's real moment? It was after I'd gone off a field problem and she met me with freaking Bush's chicken. Dude. I was like, whoa, this is a whole new standard of living. (laughs) 
getting out of the field and being met with food, bro. Because, bro, you remember we used to eat, uh, what was it, Domino's all the time. Which, don't get me wrong, Domino's is great. Because it doesn't matter if it's fresh, if it's not fresh, if it's been refrigerated, if it's burned, it always tastes the same. And that Mm -hmm. consistency is really important. Tastes like crap. But it's better than what we eat in the field. In conclusion. (laughs) 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 No, we talked about a lot. We went on a lot of rants, we went on a lot of segues, but dating versus courting i think it just boils down to communication and intentionality yeah that's 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 the two big differences for me and not saying that one is better than the other obviously i'm you know more along with the corner route because i like being married that's what i want to do but Mm -hmm. you know the same thing isn't going to work for everybody but the communication intentionality because if you're not intentional with people with what you're doing you're just going to essentially fall asleep at the wheel you're just going to go along whatever you know route you know passes you by you know not to get into another rant but you know i believe man's first sin you know as you know male versus female man's first sin was passivity which we can get into later but you know if I mean, you you could you could basically phrase that as just wasting time. Well, yeah, but I mean, like passivity versus pride. I right. Think is where the where the gender, you know, the genders tend to butt heads a lot. But if you're not intentional, if you don't have, a, you know, if not a plan, but you, if you don't have your left and rights, you know, with your values, with your principles, your non-negotiables, then you're just going to get, you know, blown around wherever. And, you know, like you said, you're just going to waste time. You're going to waste your life doing that. Mm hmm. So if you want to date people, date people. If you want to court somebody, court somebody. But, you know, have that intentionality. And no matter what you do, you know, communicate with that person. Yeah, communication is key in everything you do. And with the whole values thing, too, make sure that you guys are compatible and not having values. Because if you don't have principles and values, no one's going to want to you know, do anything with you. You know, at least nothing good. So. Your moral compass is so f- I'd be surprised if you can find your way back to the parking garage. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything else, man? No, man. Like we just like said covered the same three things in six different ways because it's just, it's, it's kind of a, a tough issue, but it's also very just kind of, I guess, instinctual. It you is. You know what I mean? It is. And a lot of that has to do with, dude, you know what? Screw it. I'm not even going to say what it has a lot to do with because we covered a lot of this stuff, but a lot of this also has to do with a lot of stuff we haven't covered yet. And it's very, very, very in the weeds. And there's a lot of it. That being said, stay tuned for more. Guys, we we started Dassodes as a way for us to share things that your dad should have taught you. And that start off with just, you know, step-by-step, Hey man, here's how to tie a tie. Here's how to change a tire. Here's how to do this or that. And we've grown and evolved to where we're trying to, you know, we're trying to teach you things that your dad should have taught you life lessons, how to do life. So we're really excited for where this series is going. We're trying to grow it and make it more concrete portion of the show but with all this nothing's going to work if you don't work on yourself if you're not the man that you want to be or the woman that you want to be i can't tell you in good conscience that this is really going to matter to you so figure out your principles if you don't like who you are change and with anything and everything, we're the hard time strong men drinking up a bare class of man. Stay in the fight. Stay in the fight. Hey guys, this is Six and Seven with the Hard Time Strongman podcast. Wanted to take a second to do a mental health check in. 
and to tell you all about the 988 Crisis Lifeline. So, the 988 Lifeline is a national network of local crisis centers that provides free and confidential emotional support to people in suicidal crisis or emotional distress 24 hours a day, 7 days a week in the United States. You can reach the Lifeline at 988lifeline.org or you can call or text 988 to get help to get someone real on the phone. Every struggle is different. Every struggle is hard. But you are not alone in whatever you're going through. As someone who has used the 988 crisis line, I fully recommend that if you're feeling any of those feelings of depression, suicide, hopelessness, get in touch with them immediately. They will help you. They will listen to you. Once again, guys, you can reach the lifeline at 988lifeline.org or you can call or text them at 988. As always, guys, stay in the fight. Stay in the fight.